All right, what's going on everybody? My name is Engage. Welcome back to another video. So in my previous video of my favorite M4 build in season six, I got a request to do a settings video. So I thought I'd do one for season six, show you all the settings I run to maximize my FPS. I'm also gonna go over my controller settings and keyboard and mouse settings, just in case you're interested in seeing those because I do switch off. I play on mouse and controller. Usually when I get bored with one or the other, I switch over to the other input. But the first thing we wanna do before even doing anything in game is come into your desktop uh, and going to NVIDIA control panel. And once that loads up, go to the first setting over here, adjust image settings with preview. And you wanna just make sure this slider here is set to performance. So set that to performance, click apply. Then you can exit out of that. And that's the only thing we need to do. Then we can go back into modern warfare. So to start off, I'm gonna go over my general settings here. I usually play on 105 FOV and I leave it at that. And my ADS field of view is independent. I usually switch this between affected and independent depending if I'm on controller or not. On controller, I like it on independent as it ADS is into default FOV of 80. And then if you have it at affected, which I like to keep on keyboard and mouse, it just zooms to the 105 field of view. So again, completely up to you. These settings are gonna be for controller, console, and PC. Some of these you might not have on console, but everything, we all have the same type of settings. So this works for console as well. Uh, next up we have brightness. I just set this to 60. I don't know why it's, I just dragged it into 60 like that. Uh, I like to have it 10 over 50 just because it's a little hard to see in this game. Everything else is a default. My HUD is just adjusted to my screen. You guys can do that. Um, my colorblind is Deuteranopia. I believe that's how you say it. And it's set to both as the colorblind target. This will actually change the colors of the world, like the map and the interface when it's set to both. And it just looks pretty cool in my opinion. It's the one I like. You guys can experiment. Uh, under the HUD, you want to make sure your minimap shape is set to square as that provides more of an area that you can see on the map compared to circle. As you can see, you can kind of see the square over here, how the map ends, but you can't even see that on the circle one. So that just gives you more information. And that's pretty much the only important things inside of general. So if we go over to graphics here, this is what I have it set to. I've always had it set to this and I actually followed some of the settings that Nvidia actually recommends for this game. So when you load up the game, I haven't, I have a bug. I've had a bug since the game has been out. This display mode resets the full screen board of this and this drops all the way down to 66. Every time I restart the game, I have to set this to full screen and set this at 100. So you always want to make sure that is set like that. And you want to also make sure that your screen refresh rate is the highest it will go. I have a 280 Hertz monitor. So that's set at that. Just make sure it's the highest it can go. A lot of you will probably have 144. So you want to make sure that's not set at 60 unless you have a 60 Hertz monitor, of course. And then moving on down, we have aspect ratio. Once it's at automatic, you want to disable V-Sync, of course. And I have a custom frame rate limit. I have the menu at 60 FPS and the out of focus at 60 FPS with the gameplay limit unlimited up to 300. And the reason I like setting these at 60 is because you don't need your GPU working overtime when you're sitting in the menu. So I just set this at 60. That's all you really need. NVIDIA highlights I've disabled. And then if you have a gra uh, NVIDIA graphics card, make sure you set this to enabled plus boost. What this does, it'll keep low latency mode. And then once your CPU is in high bound cases, it'll actually keep the GPU clock frequencies from dropping and keep them high as well, but it will increase GPU power draw. So moving on down to textures and everything, like I said, this is gonna be for the best FPS possible. So you wanna have pretty much everything to low, but things like text resolution, you wanna have this set at low, not very low. Very low is a little bit too much. So set that at low. Texture filter as low, particle quality as low, and then bullet impact and sprays you want to have this enabled and the reason i like to have it enabled personally is just because i can see where enemy bullets are hitting a lot of times in this game you'll see tracers you'll even hear gunshots sound like they're coming by you but you don't know if you're being shot at but if you see bullet holes in the wall then you'll definitely know and i also like messing around with sprays spraying them on the wall and tricking people out it doesn't mess with fps at all so there's no point in disabling it uh tessellation you want disabled on demand texture streaming you want this disabled this is gonna just write to your hard drive as you play the game. You don't want any hiccups happening with your hard drive, especially if you're still on a hard disk drive and not an SSD. Maybe if you have an SSD, you can enable this, but I still personally keep it disabled. Uh, again, to go with that streaming quality, disabled, I mean, not disabled, you want this on low. And this is the streaming quality of the world in Warzone. Then moving on down to shadows and lighting, put shadow map resolution to low. I've been told to keep these enabled because it's just caching the shadows and it helps 
speed up rendering frames, rendering future frames. But again, every time I restart the game, these go to disabled. So I'm tired of adjusting these every time. So I just leave it at disabled. Try to enable it. And if it sticks, that's good for you guys. Just keep it on. Uh, particle lighting, I have set to low. Direct X ray tracing, definitely keep this disabled. Ambient occlusion disabled and then SSR disabled. Now coming down to post processing effects, you want everything disabled, but you want the filmic strength up to one because when you have anti-aliasing set to off, off, it's gonna cause a visual noise and this filmic strength will help. And that's very noticeable in Warzone. So if you play Warzone, make sure this is set to one. Then of course, motion blur and weapon motion blur for the world and weapon is disabled and the film grain also disabled. Yeah, you wanna apply this. And then moving into our last tab before the controller settings uh, is my audio settings. I use studio monitoring headphones. So I have this set to studio reference with a master volume at a hundred. Oh, I also recommend making voice chat effect, no effect. Sounds much better in game. You won't, it won't sound like you're on an Xbox or something. So now moving over to my controller settings here. Um, I play on 6.6 with a dead zone of 0 0.06. Now the way to find your perfect dead zone is just to go into a game, lower it until it feels comfortable and it's not moving when you're not touching the stick. Uh, I'm surprised I can still keep it this low because my scuff is two years old now. ADS multiplier is all at one. I also play on lefty because I'm left-handed. Don't worry about that one. I know probably nobody watching this video is on lefty. Controller vibration disabled. I don't know why that was enabled. Aim response curve type is at standard. Aim assist standard, of course. And I do not scale aim assist with FOV. Contextual tap for war zone. Tap to reload for multiplayer. And I also have my slide behavior as tap so you can slide cancel. And I also disable my parachute auto deploy so you can get to the grounds as close as possible and then pop your shoot and you'll be the first one to the ground getting a loot before the enemy does. And that's pretty much it besides keyboard and mouse. On mouse, I play 400 DPI at 5.75 cents. I do have a full desk mouse pad, so it is slow, but uh, I got a lot of room to swipe. So that works for me. But yeah, guys, those are pretty much all my settings for Modern Warfare and Warzone. Like I said in the beginning, these will work for both PC and console. Just go through and copy them of what you have, uh, depending on your platform. Hope you did enjoy. If you did, definitely drop a like down below. And if you are still watching to the end, which I hope you are, let's do special word of the day. And today's special word of the day is a setting. So put setting in the comments below. I'll know you watch to the end and I'll reply to you. And as always, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.